Welcome back to week four of our vibes series. We've been spending a lot of time talking about emotions and how if we let them control us, it can be really, really dangerous for us. And the emotion that we're gonna be talking about today is guilt. Now, guilt is what we experience when we feel badly about something that we've done, we feel badly about something that we've said or how we've treated someone. And it can be one of those emotions that we tend to bottle up inside. When you think about it, all of us have emotions and thoughts that are deep down within us. And it can be kind of nasty because those emotions and thoughts really boil within us. But we need to realize that what's inside of us is really important. In Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And so knowing this, it's important to make sure that our heart is in a good place and that we have healthy emotions and healthy thoughts because everything that comes from our heart eventually goes on out to the outside. So when we think about guilt, right, this is when we feel badly for something that we've done, something that we've said, we can respond to guilt in a few different ways. Sometimes when we feel guilty, we try to play it off by comparing ourselves to others by saying, oh, it wasn't that bad. This person's done worse. I could have done worse. Sometimes we try to um, make amends with other people when we feel guilty and we apologize for things that we did. We ask for forgiveness, but we still have a hard time asking for forgiveness to ourselves and we just let it fester. And then also time, uh, other times with guilt as well, it just sits there, like I said, and it festers and we don't do anything about it. And because guilt ends up being bottled up inside of us, it can turn into anger. And once we have the emotion and the feeling of anger, a lot of times that anger then comes out from within us, like we talked about, anything that's within us and in our hearts will eventually come outside as well. And we can be angry and hostile towards those around us, and it can be really dangerous. So carrying the weight of guilt causes us to be off balance, and we just don't feel good about ourselves. We don't feel right about our emotions with other people. And ultimately it can impact our relationship with God as well. So what do we do with all of this guilt? The guilt that you are experiencing and you can probably think of something in your life right now where you feel guilty about what you've done, what you've said, how you've treated someone. Thankfully, we can look to the Bible for some answers to this. And in Romans, the Apostle Paul writes about how we can respond to guilt. And I think what's really important to know before we even read this passage is that Paul has been there. Before he was the Apostle Paul, he was Saul. And Saul made a career out of basically hunting down and killing followers of Jesus. Eventually, he became a, a Apostle Paul and he became a follower of Jesus as well. But he has done stuff and said stuff and treated people poorly. And these are things that he has felt badly about. And so I think it's important to know that the author here has also experienced guilt, but he's choosing to own it, not let it define him, and he's moving on with it. So if we look at Romans 8, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin. So a couple things stand out to me there. It says that there is now no condemnation for the people that are in Christ Jesus. So when you've accepted Jesus into your heart, you know that Jesus died on the cross for you and all the things that you've done and all of your sin is washed away. And so it says you are set free from the law of sin and death. Or you can put another word in there. You are set free from the power of sin and death. If we let sin fester inside of us and the guilt that we experience, it can have a lot of power and it can make us feel really yucky for lack of a better word, but it says that we are set free. And so we are to cling tight to that. We can experience freedom in Christ, knowing that he died for us and we don't have to feel guilty anymore. The passage goes on in verse three, it says, for what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us 
who do not live according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit. So because God chose to send his son, Jesus, down to earth, and he lived a beautiful, perfect life, and then he sentenced his son to death to die on the cross for all of us, we don't have to feel guilty anymore. We don't have to let guilt be the boss of us. Think about a time in your life where you have felt incredibly guilty. A lot of times we know that it can be easy to let that guilt define us and our poor actions or our poor words or the ways that we have treated people, we let that define us. But because of Jesus and because of what he did for you on the cross, you don't have to let guilt define you and your past does not define you. Those things will always be a part of your past, but you need to look at those things as part of your story. And then you get to share how God has worked in your life through those things that have been hardships, through those things that have made you feel guilty in your life. But as long as we're holding on to guilt, things are gonna feel heavy. We won't experience that freedom that we can in Christ if we just let it go. So my challenge to you students is that you would be thoughtful about the guilt that might be inside of you and start making moves towards letting that guilt go. Some of the things that you get to do as you are trusting in Jesus and as you are taking his word to be true and this passage from Romans to be true is that you don't have to be so hard on yourself anymore. You don't get to condemn yourself for the things that you have done wrong because you know that you have a savior that died for you and washed all of that away. You also don't get to condemn other people either for the things that they have done wrong because we know that Jesus also died for them as well and there's no longer a debt-debtor relationship going on here. You just don't get to condemn. Another thing you don't get to do anymore is let guilt define you, right? We know that the things that you have done in your past that you don't feel good about, those things are part of your story but they don't need to define you anymore. And then lastly, you have the opportunity to make things right. If you feel guilty about something that you said to someone or the way that you treated them, you have the opportunity to apologize, ask for forgiveness, and then forgive yourself as well so that you can move on and look to the future and all the bright and amazing things that God has for you. So I'm wondering, what if that's why you are here right now? Maybe you needed to hear these words today that you know that you are set free from all of the sin and you're set free from all of the darkness that you're experiencing because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. And because of what he did for you on the cross, guilt does not have to be your boss. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that you brought us the most amazing gift you possibly could, and that's sending Jesus down here onto earth to live a perfect, perfect life to model for us, but then ultimately that Jesus died on the cross for all of us and for all of our sins, and for the fact that we get to experience freedom in that. And I just pray that each person listening to this right now would experience a bit of freedom in you, knowing that they don't have to let guilt control them, they don't have to let guilt be the boss of them because you have set us free from the chains of guilt. We thank you for that and we praise you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.